Over the last several years, I have had so much fun decluttering my home and life, giving away things that used to matter but don't anymore, gaining clarity, prioritizing my values, and pursuing more meaningful work. That's a big one. But I was only able to do these things because of two reasons. Number one, I view decluttering as a means to create my life rather than strip away the life I have. And number two, I woke up to the many lies I believed about decluttering that kept me stuck. Now, changing my perspective toward decluttering and unsubscribing to the lies I once swore by put me on a path filled with decluttering success, which has also been extremely fun. So today, I want to debunk five of the most believed lies about decluttering that are likely keeping you stuck on your journey. And as it turns out, these are the lies I also believe. Let's get started. Lie number one, decluttering is only about the physical stuff. I started decluttering in 2016, and like most people, I devoted my attention to the material things cluttering my home. The unworn clothes piled high in my closet and the knickknacks scattered across my living room. And for a while, I was making significant progress. The excitement I felt from watching my physical environment change right in front of me was a fuel that kept me digging for more stuff to declutter. But after a month or so, I hit a wall and I began to struggle. Although my home was slowly morphing into the clutter-free space you see in my YouTube videos today, my life outside of the house was still very cluttered. I'm talking about my mental space, my emotional space, my finances, my commitments and my relationships. All of these areas were the complete opposites of clutter-free and intentional. But this reality was the truth I needed to accept if I wanted to get unstuck and truly declutter my life. And so I did. I started journaling and writing poetry to help me declutter my headspace and my emotions. I started paying off my debt. And on top of that, I uncommitted from things and people who were not serving me or adding value to my life. So why did I share this with you? Here's the wisdom I want you to walk away with. Taking a holistic approach to decluttering can bring greater clarity and balance to your life. Now, don't get me wrong. Having a home filled with less stuff is truly an amazing feeling and there are so many benefits. But if you are on this journey to create a life filled with less clutter and more clarity, then you have to look outside of your home and declutter those areas as well. And I know it's easy to watch my videos and maybe other creators you enjoy and see our clutter-free homes and feel inspired. But just know that there is more to this journey than a clutter-free home. And it is my goal on this channel to continue to show you that. So unsubscribe from this first lie immediately, all right? Lie number two, decluttering and staying clutter-free is impossible with kids. Okay, <laughs> let's debunk this. When Alexis and I got confirmation that we were pregnant with our first child, a flood of emotions poured over me. Excitement, nervousness, overwhelm, and a small piece of me was worried about how we were going to maintain our clutter-free lives with a growing family. On top of this, many people I knew personally kept asking me about minimalism and my YouTube channel and making comments like, good luck trying to own less, you're going to need a lot of stuff, or my favorite, when our kids were younger, we had insert laundry list of needs, so be prepared. <laughs> now, after answering many questions and conversing with various people I knew, I realized how many people believed this lie and how many of them wanted me to believe it too, but I wasn't convinced. Now, I also wasn't going to act like a know-it-all either because after all, I was becoming a first-time dad and this was completely new to me. But I still wasn't convinced. Check this out. Now that I've been a dad for nearly nine months, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that it is possible to declutter and stay clutter-free with kids, and that includes a newborn. Now, as our son grows, I will continue to share everything that works for us, but here's how we've navigated this so far. Communicate it with family often and early. Staying clutter-free with kids helps when you don't have a massive influx of unnecessary stuff coming in. I tell people all the time who ask that our family has been very supportive and respectful of our lifestyle choices, but I do understand that not everyone has that luxury, which is why my go-to wisdom here is open communication often and early only buy what is needed. Let's talk clothing, for example. Our son has a small six drawer dresser in his room and four of those six drawers contain all the clothes he needs from day one to 12 months. That's it. 
We managed to do this because one, we're not buying anything beyond 12 months until he gets closer to that age, but we've also created a bit of a capsule wardrobe baby edition. <laughs> so everything can match match with everything. So it keeps it simple and easy. And if you're curious, he does have some fun and playful pieces in his wardrobe as well. Prioritize experiences over more stuff. Now, this one is fairly straightforward, but to give you a quick example, we took our son hiking a few weeks ago out in Colorado, along with my brother and my parents, and to say that he loved the views would be an understatement. Toy rotations is another thing that we're doing, and to do this effectively, we've set boundaries for toy storage in our home. And from that storage space, we rotate the number of toys we have out at a time for our son to play with. Doing this doesn't overwhelm him with too many options, nor does it visually overwhelm our home by making us feel cluttered. And as an added bonus, because we've set storage boundaries for toys, it's helping us to manage what we have and what our son enjoys so we don't end up with a toy store in our home, if you know what I mean. And lastly, we skip the unnecessary gadgets. Now, I want to mention that it's necessary to recognize that every child's needs differ which is why I can only fairly speak from our experience when I say that many of the things that we were told that we'd need and would make owning less complicated, we never bought and still haven't bought. For example, a jumper, uh, a baby walker, you know, the little gadget that the baby sits in and can kind of roam and walk around, scoot around, <laughs> and a dedicated diaper bag. And that's just to name a few things. So if you have kids or plan to someday, I want to encourage you to swim against the current on this belief as we have and stay true to the fact that decluttering and staying clutter free is possible with kids. Lie number three, I'm worried my home will look boring. One misconception about decluttering is the belief that it requires eliminating all color and personality from your home. Okay. <laughs> I often receive questions about why minimalists tend to decorate their homes using monochromatic colors. And ironically, my home decor choices reflects the very essence of these questions. But if I put myself in your shoes, I understand your reservations about decluttering and not wanting your home to feel boring. However, boring is subjective. And based on my experience, owning a vibrant red couch and a subtle mist gray couch I can confidently assure you that there is no relationship between the process of decluttering, the color scheme of your decor, and how your home feels to you. You see, it's crucial to remember that a decluttered life is filled with things you value. And if you love color, embrace it. There are numerous ways to incorporate color into your home, closets, and life without it feeling overwhelmed or cluttered. So I encourage you to stay true to you. There's a reason I say that at the end of every one of my videos. Lie number four, my identity is tied to my possessions. Before I started my decluttering journey, I strongly believed that my identity was closely tied to my possessions. And for a long time, this belief held me back as the idea of letting go of my belongings felt like losing parts of myself. But an aha occurred when I posed a question to myself. Who would I be if all I had was myself in a mirror in front of me? Who would I be if all I had was myself in a mirror in front of me? This question challenged my thinking and helped me realize two things. Number one, the notion that my identity relied on my possessions was a significant falsehood. It just, just wasn't true, right? And number two, our identity is not defined by what we own. It is shaped by our character, values, achievements, experiences, and contributions to the world. So if you're also holding on to this misconception, I urge you to release it because embracing this truth will empower you to embark on a decluttering journey that fosters personal growth, self-discovery, and the creation of an environment that aligns with your authentic self. Lie number five, I'm wasting money. Before decluttering, I had a closet filled with more clothes and shoes than I could ever wear. Most were either worn once or brand new with tags still on them. And if I'm honest, this made it challenging to declutter because it felt like I was wasting money every time I attempted to let something go. So I had a tough decision to make. Do I keep everything and lie to myself about wearing it someday? Or do I let things go and realize that the money I'm trying not to waste is already gone. 
In the midst of this tug of war, I learned a valuable lesson. Holding on to unused or unnecessary possessions can be more wasteful in the long run than the perceived loss of the initial investment. Here's why. The first reason is because of something called opportunity cost. You see, keeping things that no longer serve a purpose takes a valuable space in our homes and lives. By decluttering, we create space for new experiences, opportunities, and items that align with our values or our current needs and desires. The second reason is something called maintenance costs. Here's the thing. Possessions require time and effort to clean, maintain, and store. The more you own, the more you have to manage. Again, by decluttering, we can minimize these costs associated with upkeep, allowing us to focus our resources on more meaningful activities and experiences. But as great as that sounds, it doesn't mean anything if you continue to believe any of these five lies, which can and will be detrimental to your decluttering journey, causing you to remain stuck. Decluttering is only about the physical stuff. Lie. Decluttering and staying clutter-free is impossible with kids. That's a lie. I'm worried my home will look boring. Again, another lie. My identity is tied to my possessions. Lie. And I'm wasting money. That's also a lie. But see, to avoid this detrimental path, you must change your perspective toward decluttering and unsubscribe from these lies for good. Do that and you will make more decluttering progress while having a ton of fun along the way. Keep growing on your journey, my friend. I'm rooting for you because I want you to win when it comes to this decluttering thing. I really do. Always stay true to you and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.